Hey, what is up guys? This is Eli for MoboxGraphics.com and today we are going to look at a 3D topology effect. After seeing this upload on Dribble, we wanted to try this out ourselves, so that's how we came up with this video. Also, as always, the project files of this video are available at the Patreon page, so go check that out if you want to. But for now, let's get started with the tutorial. So the first thing you notice on this dribble shot is that we were using some kind of landscape. So let's get started with creating a landscape. And we're going to keep the size at the default values, but you can stretch it up a bit. And the first thing we're also going to do, and you need to make sure you do that, is decreasing the width and the depth segments. So let's go from 100 to something like 15 segments only. So this is a way more simple shape. And maybe to already see what this will be looking like, we are going to add a subdivision on this, so make sure it is a child of the subdivision. And we can also increase the number of subdivisions for the editor, so it is a bit smoother. And now we are just going to try to make an interesting landscape. So just play around with the values. I think playing around with the scale is a nice thing to do. And also with the furrows. And of course the most dramatic changes are happening when you're playing around with the seed value. So if you found something that you like, you can just keep it as this. And now we are going to start with making this editable. So make sure the landscape is selected and press C. And now we would like to move the axis of the landscape to the bottom of this. So in this case, because it is hollow at the bottom, we need to select one on the edge. It doesn't matter that it is not exactly centered on the horizontal axis. So with this selected, you need to go to Mesh, Axis Center and select this button. And now we're going to center the axis to the selected points and hit execute. And now if you go back to the model mode, you should have the axis on this edge. So we are doing this because now we can scale this down to 0% and have a completely flat landscape. So that's how you can get this effect we had in this dribble shot. Now let's get started with the materials for the scene. So the first thing we're going to do is creating a background. So we only will use the luminance channel and the color for this can be anything you like but I like to go to something very dark blue and almost grey so let's also create a background object of course so we can drag the material on top of that and now we are going to create the material for the actual landscape so let's disable the color and reflectance again and only keep the luminance one and what we are going to do to get this gradient on this is go into the texture field and add a gradient to this Click on the thumbnail to open this up. And the first thing we need to change is the type of gradient from 2D U to 2D Vertical. So this way it will go up instead of to the side. Now the first thing we need to do at the colors is going to this first point. And we are going to use a color picker. So we can get this color off the background. So that's safe now. And now you can add any color you like. I think something at this point, almost to the middle, is a good spot to get your second color. So let's go from red for example and end up with a yellow color. And now let's take a look what happens if we drag this on the landscape. You can see it is still not going vertically, it's still going horizontally. And also if you would scale this landscape, you can see it is sticking to the landscape. So when the landscape will be growing, like we saw on the image, it will just take the gradient with it. So it isn't actually representing the height of it. So we need to get rid of this material on the landscape and instead we are going to add a placeholder for the landscape. So something that will hold the material and will just project this on the landscape. So let's get a cube object and we are going to scale this so it is just a bit bigger than the actual landscape. You can also go in the side view or something. So this looks good now. Now we are going to apply this material on this cube and make sure the subdivision surface and the landscape are inside of this cube or a child of the cube. And we also need to go in this material and change the projection from UVW mapping to flat. This way you can see it is finally getting this vertical gradient on it. So now you can see the landscape and only see the cube. So what we need to do is clicking these small dots so they turn red on the cube. That means it will be hidden in the editor and also in the renders. But now we need to make sure everything under this is still visible. So you need to do the same thing, but make sure they are green. So now if we render, 
you can see it is still visible. Now next thing you can see is that the edges are not exactly the same color as the background. So we need to go back in our material and the gradient. And just move this first point a bit further so you can see it is actually there. Let's render again. Now you can see we have a seamless gradient to the background. Okay, so that's the first step for our animation. A second thing you may have noticed is that there is some kind of line pattern on the landscape to give an indication of the height. So there are multiple ways to do this, but what I found to be the easiest way if you don't need to be very precise on numbers is creating a new material and you're going to disable the color and reflectance again and just keep the luminance. And I'm going to make this one black, I think it looks the best. Now we need to enable the alpha channel and this way we will be able to get some kind of lines. The best way I found to do this is adding a texture, which will be a tiles surface. Let's go in here and you can already see there is something going on here, but we still have a lot of tiles and different shades on this. So let's make everything black to start off with. And the only thing that is creating the lines is the grout color. So that is the small lines in between tiles. So for this, we are going to make this just a bit brighter. So something gray. But now we have squares, so maybe let's try and see what happens if we drag this on the cube object. You can see we have these lines, but this is way too big. And also projected in the wrong way. So we need to go to the side here and make sure we have a projection that is flat. So right now this is looking even worse, but we only need the horizontal lines, so that's a good thing. To do this you need to scale up the U scale of this. So let's go from 100% to something like a lot of nines. This way we only have the horizontal lines left. Or maybe just one line right here, so you can go even higher with this. And now we need to scale down these lines so they are not as big. I found a grout width of 2% is just good for this size of a project. And we're also going to decrease the bevel width to the minimum value, but we still need to keep it above zero, otherwise it will be totally invisible. So let's go to something like 0 0.1. Let's render again to see how this looks. Now the next thing you can see a new problem that occurred is that we have this line at the edge here. Or it can be at any other place on your project, it depends on the landscape. So what we need to do is making sure it is not counting this bottom portion with the lines. So it is only starting where the red part is starting. So luckily this is easy to do with the flat projection. Make sure you have the texture tag selected and also the object which it is being projected on. Now we can go in the texture mode and maybe you also want to enable the axis mode and we are going to drag this up. Also one important thing I forgot is going back to this texture and making sure the tiling option is off. Otherwise it will always keep repeating itself at the bottom so we don't need that. Now we can go ahead and make sure it is above all the other parts. So I can see a line right here, I think that's good. And another thing you can do is scaling this down vertically, so that way the lines will be closer to each other. It depends on what you like. Also while we are at it, let's make sure it covers the whole area. Like this, just to be sure. And now you can see we got rid of these lines at the bottom. Also notice how the render has more lines than we have on the editor. So always make sure you make some quick renders in between your editing because it will not end up the same way as it appears to be on the editor. So now let's go ahead and start with the animation of this landscape. So the first thing I'm going to do is start at the center of the animation, because the landscape will be at this scale on that point. So let's make sure the landscape is selected. And also before we can make a keyframe and just screw this up if we would do it like this, we need to make sure we are going in the object mode instead of the model mode. It's something strange in Cinema 4D, but I actually recommend always going in the object mode when animating anything. So with this selected, we can make a keyframe and end up at a zero scale at the end. And also the same thing at the start. So this should work fine now. And you can also see how the textures are sticking on the original position. So that is not interfering with the scaling. So with just these few steps we already made what we saw on the dribble shot. But I want to take this to a next level by adding some dynamic text on the top of the mountain. So we are going to do this with a mode text. Let's go in the object tab. And we are going to 
make this very small compared to how it is right now. So when you've picked your font, we want to make sure this text is sticking to the top of this mountain when it is scaling up and down. So this isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. We will need to use some espresso for this, but it isn't that hard, so don't be intimidated to do this. The first thing we need to do is making sure this text is in a null. So that way we will just link the null to the top of the mountain and we will be able to make some small adjustments to the text inside of that null. It will just give us a bit more freedom. Now we need to find out what point of the landscape we are going to stick this to. So let's take a look at the landscape and this will be totally different for everyone. But I think this is a good point right here for my liking. So that's something close to the top, but it doesn't have to be exactly at the top. So you could also use something at the side and just adjust the text inside of this null later on. But I'm going to take this one. And now we need to find a way to show Expresso what point this is. And there's something you may not have seen in Cinema 4D yet, but it is this structure tab right here. So click on that. And inside of this, you can see all the coordinates of the landscape. So right now this top one looks to be selected, but that is not the case. We need to scroll down until we see something that is darker. So this way you can see point 120 is the one we are having selected. So let's keep that in mind. Yours will be a different number, so keep your number in mind. And we're going to start with the Espresso part. So it doesn't matter on which object you create an Espresso tag, but to keep it clean, let's just stick it on this landscape object. So right click, go in Cinema 4D Tags and create this Espresso tag. It should open this window or you may need to double click on this icon right here. And now we need to gather the objects we will be manipulating inside of this field right here. So this is easier than you think it would be. So what we are going to move is this null with the text in it. So let's drag the null inside of here. We are going to base this off the landscape, so let's drag the landscape inside of here as well. And the missing link in this Espresso setup is that point we had selected. So we cannot drag this point inside of here. We actually need to right click on this field, create a new node, go to Espresso, and it should be under the General tab. And here you have the point operator. So I see my order is in the wrong direction. So let's go and move this null behind the point and the landscape in front of it. And I know for the beginners this may be very confusing, but you should just look at it as some kind of electrical wiring. So we have an input at the beginning, so the blue color, and we have an output at the red part. So in this case, the point operator will make things happen for this Espresso setup. But you can see we have some default inputs and outputs, but we don't have these on the null and the landscape. So let's make sure we have an output on the landscape. This one will be just the object output. So you can add that by clicking this red corner and selecting object. So now we can connect this object, so the landscape, to this point value. So it will look at the points of the landscape. Now we need to click on this point field. And at the side here, at the attributes manager, you can see we have a point index. And that is exactly where we will add this point number we found in this structure menu. So in my case, this is 120. For you, it may be a different number. So now it knows what point of the landscape we need to look at. And now it will have this point position here. So that's there by default. And now we need to connect it with the position of the null. So we need an input for this one so we can connect it. And this should be something that is a position. So that is under coordinates and the global position and just select the global position because we want it to move on every axis. Now we can just drag one last connection from the point position to the global position and that way it will be connected. You can already see it is being snapped to this point. So if we move this, it will always be there. So let's just move our text inside of this to center this up a bit more and make it float above the landscape. So that is looking pretty good. Now this mode text is just saying text. So we need to find a way to make it show numbers that are indicating the height of the mountain. This is also happening with Espresso, but this one will be way easier. We are going to take the position of the null. So let's go to the coordinates tab and we only need the height value. So that is the Y value. Let's click on the Y exactly on the Y only 
so that it turns yellow. Right click, go to expressions and click on set driver. So now Expresso knows this one will drive another value. Let's go back to our mode text in the object tab and we want this text to be driven by that driver. So right click on text, go to expressions and click on set driven absolute. Now you can see the numbers will just move along with the height of it. Also, if you're not satisfied with the number it is, you can just move this cube up and that way it will be like it should be. Now one last thing I added on my version is a second mode text inside of the null. And we can delete the Expresso tag on this one. And we're just going to give it the name of the mountain or just call it Summit or something. And let's move it up so it is above the numbers, like this. So that is looking good. Now one last thing we can do to make this look even better is making sure the text is always pointing towards this. So the easiest way to do this is adding a camera object and go inside of the view. So now we can create a target tag on the null and drag the camera in the target object field. This way it will always be connected to each other. So if we rotate the camera and just click somewhere in the viewport to make it update, you will see it is always looking towards us. But one more thing we need to adjust is the rotation of the mode text because it is flipped the other way around. An important thing to do is not selecting both of them, because this way if we are in the object mode, you can see the rotations are at a weird value. But if we select just one of them, you can see it is all set at zero. So make sure you only have one selected, and we are going to rotate it on the H value, so 180 degrees to flip it around. Now we also need to move these back to the center again, like this. So now you can see it is moving along with the mountain top and also looking towards us. One last thing I did to not have these numbers and text just float when there is nothing to be shown is adding a visibility tag on them. So right click on the null, create a display tag and make sure the visibility is turned on. So now you can create a keyframe somewhere close to the end or something. And at the actual end, let's make sure the visibility is set to zero and create a new keyframe. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, but the other way around. So this way you can see at frame zero, everything is invisible. At frame five, it will be slightly more visible. And at frame 10, it should be fully visible. You can also move these a bit more to the center to make it look better. Otherwise, it will still be too visible at the start. So right now there's nothing visible. And when we have the animation starting, you can see it is getting visible. So that's just some basic stuff to finish things up. So that is all there is to this tutorial. If you didn't understand the Expresso part, that's not a big problem. It's always the same technique to get something to stick to a point of another object. So you can always look back at this video if you forgot how to stick something to an object. Apart from that, I hope you learned something new today. If you did, leaving a like would really mean a lot to us. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.